So CMOS stands for Complementary Metal Oxide Semiconductor. And this, so this CMOS technology is what's used for manufacturing MOSFETs. So MOSFETs are the type of transistors that are often used in the, these digital devices. So MOSFETs are made from a semiconductor, which is usually silicon. So we've got this silicon and we can actually add electrons into this semiconductor to make it more negatively charged. So just a bare piece of silicon will be uh, neutral. We can add in some electrons and that, because the electrons are negative, that will make it uh, negatively charged. So we call that N-type. So that'll be N-type semiconductor. Now it holds, holes are actually the kind of absence of an electron. So when we say holes can be added, we're really saying we're going to remove some electrons. So we remove some electrons from this semiconductor to remove some negative charge, and that's going to leave behind more positive charge. So by removing electrons, we'll leave behind holes, where it's actually, we're essentially adding holes into the semiconductor that make it more positively charged. So that's P-type semiconductor. So this is where the, na the name comes from. You know, we've got semiconductor, and because we've got both N-type and P-type, you know, these are complementary to each other. So you can get N-MOS, so that's um, just negative metal oxide semiconductor, or P-MOS, just positive, but complementary metal oxide semiconductor means we've both got N-types and P-types semiconductors in there. So we're going to look at these examples now, how to make an N-channel MOSFET, so this is a, or an N-FET. So we've got our, if you get a piece of um, P-type positive silicon, and we can actually implant these negative areas here underneath the source and the drain. So when you actually put these N and P-types together, it forms this depletion region. Around. So the yellow, yellow area here is a depletion region. So this stops, this is also like a you know, non-conductive region and it stops any current flowing between the drain and the source. So in this particular, so what, you know, in this particular case, the transist transistor is switched off because we've got, if you put a current into the drain, so there's no conducting channel for it to get to the source. You know, it can go into this N-type conductive region, but then it hits this, uh, say, non-conducting region, depletion region. And can't go anywhere else, so the transistor is switched off. So, when you put a positive voltage on the gate, so you apply a positive voltage to the gate with respect to the source terminal, this positive um, voltage is going to attract electrons from this all this region around here. Any kind of free electrons that are floating around will get attracted. To this region so all these electrons get attracted here because they know positive will attract negative so that attracts electrons so because this n-type is actually a piece of semiconductor with extra electrons these electrons what's been attracted underneath the gate region effectively join these two n-types together so now i can actually get um you know now there's a, a conductive channel between the drain and the source, so we can say that the transistor is switched on. So by putting a voltage onto this gate, it attracts electrons underneath the gate region, create this conductive channel, and then switch the, switch the transistor on. So I should point out as well, so the gate, and the drain and the source, they're made of metal contacts. So that's where in MOSFET, that's the, where the M comes from, metal. This insulator is an oxide layer, so that's where the O, so we've got the metal, we've got this oxide, and then obviously all this part here is a semiconductor. So this is where the MOS comes from in MOSFET, so this is a metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. So P-type device, so our PFET, so that's kind of the, the opposite behaviour will to the n-type. So again, when nothing's a flat, you know, they've got this um, device is switched off because we've got this depletion region, what forms between the P and the N. 
So that means the drain and the source are not connected. So now but with a P-type, when we apply a negative voltage with respect to the source terminal, so if we make this if, they, if we make the gate more negative compared to the source, you know that's going to attract these holes. So it's effectively it'll kind of any I suppose if you kind of think about it in terms of electrons, if that's negative, any kind of electrons will get kind of repelled away, if you will. So electrons will run move away leaving behind a kind of positive region so that positive region effectively joins up the two p-type regions under the drain and source so now we've got this channel again so now we've got this region where the current can flow so that was gives a that's a brief overview just how a transistor works don't worry about it you don't need to know it in too much depth but we can see so with these p-type and n-type transistors, how we actually create a knock gate. So we connect them up like this. So we've got our p-type on the top and our n-type on the bottom. So note here how it's connected. So the drains are actually connected together. So for the p-type on the top, the source, so you can always remember because p is positive, so the source is connected to the positive rail. So VDD is a positive supply. So that might be say 5 volts and VSS is a negative supply or the grain connection so uh, 0 volts and then the end type is the bottom so the source you know, remember the source is connected to the power uh, rail and we've got our drains connected in the middle here and then the gates are just connected to input here so you can see when we apply a 1 so when you apply a volt so I'm going to talk about a 1 here and say this is 5 volts, 0 volts, say 5 volts, 0 volts. When I say applying a 1 on the input, we'll say by putting 5 volts on here. So we apply a logic 1 by applying a voltage. It actually turns on the n-type at the bottom will be switched on. The p-type will switch off. So you can see the output then is connected via here. So we'll have zero volts or a logic zero on the output. And for the case where we put say zero volts on this input, that'll actually turn on the p-type and turn off the n-type. So then the output then this p-type transistor at the top switches on, and the output will then be connected to VDD and we'll get five volts on the output. So this is how we, we can create a not gate from two transistors so you need a p-type and n-type connect them up like this and you can create a not gate and more importantly we're going to look how to create a NAND gate because we know that from NAND gates we can create all other logic gates so if we're able to create a NAND gate using transistors we can then um, use these NAND gates out of transistors then to create all the logic gates and that's the kind of foundation of this hardware hierarchy so this shows the CMOS implementation of a two input NAND gate. So again at the top we've got our two p-types. So you can see you've got the when you've got the bubble on the gate, that shows that it's a p-type. So you know the p the p-types at the top connected to the positive uh, power supply rail, and the n-types are in series at the bottom connected to the uh, grain supply. So we'll look at now the different um, input possible input combinations. So again, if we apply, um, if we put zero volts on each of the inputs, that's going to turn off. And effectively, the n types both will switch off, and the p types both switch on. So that means the output can be connected to that positive supply. So this is five. And that's 5 volts, we'll end up with 5 volts here or a logical 1 on the output. So we put 0, 0, we'll get a 1 on the output. And for the case we've got 0, 1 on the input, where there's, where there's a 1 here, that's going to turn off that P uh, transistor. And this input being a 0, turn off this N. So even though we've got 0 and 1 here, this, trans, this top P transistor is still switched on 
And so we'll end up with five volts or a logical one on the eight foot. So that's two of our input combinations, but we're now at one zero. So we put a one on this input, it's going to turn this P type off, turn on this uh, end fret. Zero on this input will turn off this end fret and turn on this P fret. So we still end up with a conducting path just trying to switch switched on. So again, if this is five volts, we'll end up with five volts on the eight foot or a logical one. So you, and it's only this case now, because in, in these in these two examples, there's always at least, because the P types are in parallel, there's always at least one of them switched on. So as long as one of them switched on and they're in parallel, it'll open up a connection between the power rail and the eight foot, given a one on the eight foot. Because the inputs are in, because the end fets at the bottom are in series, when there's a zero on the input, there's always going to be at least one of these end fets switched off, which means the output is not connected to the, the ground power supply rail. So it's only this last case, we've got a one and one on these inputs. Now both the P types will switch off. And both of the N uh, type or uh, M FETs will switch on. So then now we've got this conducting channel to the output from here. So this is zero volts. Went to a zero volts on the output or logical zero. So if we go through those input combinations in zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. So it's off the zero, zero, we've got a one. Zero, one, we've got a one. One, zero, we've got a one. One one we got a zero. So that's the NAND function. So you can recognise this from the um, NAND truth table. So just seeing then, because of this complementary nature of the CMOS circuits, for every possible input, either one or more of the end fets or P tets will be switched off. So it means when it's switched off, it's not conducting. And that means there's never a direct current path between the power supply rails. So we look here, you know, current, there's no short circuit, if you will, between VDD and VS. These are switched off, it stops it here. Even this is switched on, but this one prevents the short circuit. Again, here we can get, current can go through here and even through this one, but then this one's switched off, so it prevents the short circuit between VDD and VSS. And then for the last case, both, these are switched off at the top, so even though we could get, you know, current going through here, so these are switched off. So it means there's never a direct current path between VDD and VSS. So that means there's very little static power consumption because if you had a if you had a current what was flowing between VDD and VSS, that's just waste. That's just um, yeah, short circuit in your power supply sensor. It's just wasting power. So the fact that that can't happen under static conditions means there's very little static power consumption. But actually, it can happen just for very brief moments during switching. So for example, you might change, if it was going to change, if it's, look at these two circuits here. Say it was going to change this to a zero. So we know from here, when this input is a zero, that transistor switches off. So this one is currently switched on. So it'll switch off and then this transistor here is going to um, switch. So, that's, so this will switch on and this will switch on. So during this switching procedure, as that changes from a 1, and we change it to the 0, this transistor will switch and this one will switch. And for a very brief moment, a direct current path can open. So just during this switching procedure, no, really, you know, we get this kind of um, very brief instant in which is this direct current path. So we get increased power consumption. So that's why this switching power, you know, the faster you've got a clock speed in your processor, the quicker these transistors, you know, the more often the switching, so the more often this conducting channel opens up very briefly. So it means the faster clock speeds, you know, that's why the reason they use more power.